So uh, today we're going to be talking about, let me get my screen share up here. Uh, we're going to be talking about building applications with Cloudflare AI. And specifically what we're going to do is um, we're going to build a application using Llama, which is our large language model. Um, so I'm going to show you how to create a new workers application, uh, integrate the Cloudflare AI package and start making queries with it. And then, uh, hopefully deploy a, a nifty little chat bot. Uh, what did I call it? I'll show you what the actual example will look like. Cloudflare AI example. Um, so what we're going to end up building is something like this, uh, hopefully if we have time and it is also open source. So if we, for some reason, don't get time to kind of conclude everything, I will send a link. Um, I'll, I'll show you the link here on screen as well. So you can see it, but basically what you'll be able to build is this little view where we can ask it a question, uh, or maybe I'll say, uh, say hello to all of our attendees. And then once it sends a message, it'll actually stream that response back to the browser uh, from Cloudflare AI. So there is a streaming version of this. There's also a blocking version, which is a concept we'll cover. We'll say hello to our attendees once more. And you can see there's a delay here as it goes, as it goes, and then it replies back. So it's this idea of blocking responses versus streaming responses. Um, so that's what we'll be building today. If you want to check it out, it's cloudflare-ai-example.signalnerve.workers.dev. So that's what that looks like. Um, some of the styling stuff we may not get completely implemented just because it's a little like finicky, you know, uh, HTML and CSS stuff. Um, but I will show you how to create a new project, uh, integrate workers AI and, uh, and a couple other things along the way. Okay, so let's get started here. I really close my one password. I don't think that's what I want up on stream. Um, okay, so if you attended the webinar last week, I told you the one piece of homework basically that you needed to do, um, and you don't have to have done it. I'll kind of show you what it looks like uh, if you were unable to make it happen. Uh, it was to sign up for a Cloudflare Workers account and specifically uh, for our free plan, uh, in order to use this integration. I also said you should set up Node. If you haven't set up Node, it's something you can do later on and you can just follow along as, as I sort of code here. Um, and the reason that we're going to do that is we're going to use the uh, the Node Tool Wrangler, which is Cloudflare's command line uh, interface for building workers applications. And we're going to use that to create and deploy our application. Um, let's take a minute for questions. Yeah. Uh, is there, okay, two questions about recording from last week? Yes. So if you're just um, just coming now to the recording, uh, we are going to present all of the um, recordings from each of these webinars uh, after the final webinar is concluded uh, next week. So we're going to take all of them and I think either bundle them together in some way or email them out. Um, we'll make them available. And then the other question is, can you share links here, please? It's easier to copy paste. Yeah, sure. I will, uh, I'll just drop them in chat. That's a good idea. Thanks. Okay. Um, so let's start by creating a new project. I'm going to say NPM create Cloudflare. And uh, I'm just going to give it a name here. I'll say like AI Llama webinar example. And this is all uh, part of our nice little uh application creation wizard this used to be called a wizard back in the day on the computer i don't know if people still call it a wizard um but for now i'm just going to make a hello world script uh, i'll say no to typescript for now just make it simple no types um, what it's going to do is it's going to create a new um application it's going to install all of the dependencies right now we probably just have the one dependency which is uh which is Wrangler, is a dev dependency. And then I can also actually deploy as well. So let's go ahead and try and deploy. Even though we haven't written anything yet, we can get that nice little deploy loop going. Um, you can see it's deployed via npm run deploy, which is something we're going to be writing a lot. Uh, looks like I had a network issue. Yes, this is going to be... I may lose you here for 
10 seconds, five seconds as I turn off uh, Cloudflare Warp on my computer. Okay. <clears throat> Give it a couple seconds just for in case there's any sort of stream interruption. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll go in, uh, what did I just call this? AI Llama webinar example. Let's try and deploy that again. Since it didn't work last time, I'll run NPM uh, run deploy. And you can see that at the bottom here, it has been published. So let me copy that URL. I'll share it here in chat for people. Um, send this to everyone. And then I'll also open it in the browser. So you can see I just get this hello world back. So uh, we've deployed our first application, which is great. Um, so obviously it doesn't do anything yet, but we'll fill in some details here. <clears throat> you can kind of understand how it works. Um, so next thing we're going to do is we're just going to uh, install a couple packages. Um, so the two we're going to install, uh, one is called Hano, which is a framework for building uh, applications on workers. Uh, it's kind of like Express. Uh, it has a really great... Uh, interface. It's also written by someone who works at Cloudflare named Yusuke, who's a developer advocate on my team, though he was working on Hano before he started working here. And a lot of people <clears throat> here at Cloudflare use it a lot. I'll show you why it's really awesome. Uh, next package we're going to install is the Cloudflare AI package. So that's at Cloudflare slash AI. And go ahead and install those. And now what we're going to do is uh, take a look at uh, let's pull the file up at our uh, at our application. Let me move some of this little zone, like Zoom stuff. It's very in the way. So I will give you my best uh, one to two minute approximation of how to understand Cloudflare workers. Um, in fact, let me open this up in VS Code and maybe it'll be a little bit easier to read. Um, yes. Open that up, make this a little bigger. And then I'll also do, sorry for your eyes, I'm going to do a light theme here so that it's a little bit uh, easier to see. So sorry if I just blinded you. Um, okay, anyway, so let's take a look at this file. Uh, it's, it's one file inside of the workers project right now, source slash worker JS. And this is a workers function. So. Workers functions are uh, written in the syntax, which we call a module worker. And basically, you have this module that you're exporting. It's the default export for this, um, you know, for this file. And then inside of that, we have one of what we call a handler. So this handles an incoming event that comes in uh, to this workers function. Uh, here, we're handling what's called a fetch event. And a fetch event is an HTTP request. So when someone makes a request to my worker, this fetch uh, handler is what actually you know returns a response. Uh, we have the ability to do things like look at the request. So we could see, for instance, what URL are they requesting? What kind of uh, HTTP method is it? Is it a get? Is it a put, a post? Um, we also have access to an env here which is any sort of bindings or configuration that we have set up for our project, which we will use here in a little bit. And then we also have a context. Um, this is used for doing a couple different little uh, like behavioral changes to your worker on how you want it to handle certain situations. We won't actually be using the context here. Um, and then finally, inside of this uh, fetch handler, we're just returning a new response called hello world. And uh, this will just return that plain uh, text here, hello world. So that's where that comes from. OK, um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the basics of our HANO project. So the reason that we're doing this is if we wanted to handle, say, multiple URLs, like multiple paths and stuff like that, we would have to do something like you know, get the URL here and then maybe set up like a switch statement on the URL. You can see Copilot's trying to kind of suggest things to me. It'd be something like, is it going to work? Yeah, it'd be something like this. So we'd start setting up like a case statement or like if and else and things like that. Um, that can get a little unruly and, and hard to read. So instead, we're going to use Hano. Um, so first, we'll import uh, Hano here from the Hano package. And then we're going to set up a new app here. 
we're uh, so that's kind of basic with all all Hano applications. So we import the actual uh, class here, and then we set up a new instance of an app. And then what we can do is set up a path handler here. So we'll say app dot get, and then we'll pass the path. And then you can see Copilot's trying to suggest stuff. It's actually not uh, not how it works in Hano. Um, we get this single uh, context uh, parameter here. And then what I can do is say uh, return c.text hello world. And then finally, I will export that app as my default export for this file. OK, so let me, I'm just going to start deploying right from this terminal so I don't have to switch windows. So we will publish that. And then, oops, we'll close this and refresh. And you can see it's very minor, but I added a comment there, or I'm sorry, a comma. So it just says, hello, comma, world. OK, so we've deployed a Hano-backed application. Uh, and now we can get to the fun stuff. This is like the basics of how to get something up on the screen. Let's start doing some AI stuff. Um, so the first thing we need to do is uh, actually go into this file, wrangler.toml. Now, the Wrangler Toml file is a configuration file for your workers project. So you can set up all sorts of stuff here. You can see there's a bunch of configuration. If you want to integrate things like databases or um, R2 buckets or routing or all kinds of tricky stuff there, um, we're going to delete all of this. And we're just going to add a single uh, value here. Just double checking my work here on the side. We're going to say AI uh, binding is equal to AI. So what we've done here is we've set up this little section called AI, and we said we want to use Cloudflare AI in our project, and we're going to do that by attaching it to this AI binding. Um, so what that actually does here is it makes available um, in the c.env, which is the same as the um, as the env that was in our original module worker. It makes this binding available called AI, and so what we can do here is we can say c.env.ai. Well, this is our AI binding. Now we're actually going to use it. So we'll say AI equals new AI. And I'll just do that to import it there at the top. And then I will pass in this binding here um, as the actual like parameter into this AI class. So we're going to go and import this AI um, class here from the Cloudflare AI package. And then I'm going to set up a new instance uh, saying const AI equals new AI. Maybe I'll shrink this as well. OK, so nothing has actually changed with our application yet, right? Like we've just set up this, uh, this instance here called AI. We haven't actually done anything with it. How do we actually start querying it? Well, what we'll do here is we'll run our first uh, LLM. You can ignore Copilot. That's not what the code is. Um, we can run our first sort of LLM text generation here. Um, so to do that, I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to make sure this is an asynchronous function because we're going to do some kind of asynchronous programming here. And then I'm going to just say response. Um, and we're going to run, let's see, ai.run. Um, I'm on the wrong section here. Yeah, so ai.run. And the, you'll see the reason why I'm looking at my notes here is because it's a super long string. So I'll say ai run cf slash meta oh and you can see actually my vs code auto completes it which is great so all of these models here let me just prefix with with uh well yeah the at sign works so these are all models that we have available here inside of this ai package so there's cf here which is cloudflare um, there's a couple uh, hf which are um, hugging face models which is awesome uh, for now i'm going to pick this uh, cf uh, just lost it, of course. Mistype. CF meta. There we go. So meta 7B. Is that the right one? I actually want this one, the N8 model. Um, so I'm going to call this model here CF meta llama 2, 7 billion parameters, and it's a chat model. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in a uh, string here as the second argument. This is just what I wanted to say. So hello world, sure, that seems fine. And then what I will get back here, I believe this actually uh, returns, let's call this AI response. I believe this actually returns an array or an object that has a, a string inside of it. So what we'll do is we'll say return text AI response dot answer. 
think that should work here. Actually, you know what? It's going to be AI response dot response. Response. And what this is going to do is it's going to query this model with uh, Hello World. So let's see what it does. We'll also make sure my code works. And then this would be a good spot to ask some questions or answer some questions. Yep, I broke something. Okay, so what did I break? Uh, what did I break here? Well, I know one way to fix it, which I didn't really want to get into quite yet because it's more complicated, but that's okay. Uh, CF meta, llama 27B. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll just get into the more complicated part. Um, and I'll show you. We're going to get there anyway, so it's okay. Um, basically, I suspect what the problem was here, and I could do like a, you know, catch an error and look at it and stuff, but that's okay. We'll just kind of move on because I promise you we're going to be writing it in this other way most of the time anyway. Um, what we're going to do here is actually pass in uh, not just messages, but actually like an object here. And what we're going to do inside of that is pass in a, an array here called messages. Um, this is what we call, I talked about this a little bit in the last webinar, it's called a scoped prompt where basically you have the ability to really customize how the AI responds through providing different messages that have different roles attached to them. So each one of these messages will have both a role. In this case, I'll call this one system. And then um, the text here where, uh, as a text, it's actually content, um, where I will say, uh, you are a helpful assistant. This is a... Uh, prompt that I use a lot. And basically what the system role says is, uh, you know, tells the AI, here's how you should act, right? Act is, this is the system. I'm telling you act as a helpful assistant. Now what I can do is I can say role user, and this can be my actual content. Uh, in fact, maybe I'll make this more interesting. Hello, how is it going? So what I'm doing here is First, I'm providing this system message that says, here's sort of how to behave and act. And then the user message, which is the actual thing I want it to respond to, or I want it to generate text based on. So I'll just say, hello, how's it going? Later on, we will parameterize this and make it something where you can provide more interesting uh, input to it. So um, let me just double check my work here. I want to make sure I'm actually doing the right stuff. So response, answer, content, yeah. Yeah, okay, so let's publish this. Hopefully this will work this time and maybe I'll have to go down into the try catch and figure out what my typo is here. Yeah, it looks like it worked. Okay, so hello, adjust glasses. It's going well here. How about you? It's a little too friendly for me. <laughs> I would find this output a little annoying. Honestly, if it was, uh, if it was, if I was working as AI, but that's okay. We can, uh, we can change that, right? Let me say... Instead of you are a helpful assistant, uh, how about you are a pirate? Let's go with that. And let's see if the output changes and it's something more tolerable. So we'll publish here. See, it's working through it. And then I'll refresh. It takes a couple seconds, right? This is a blocking example, which I showed at the beginning. Uh, yeah, there we go. Pirate output, that's more what we want. Very cool. So what we've done is we've made our first uh, query to Workers AI and gotten some output back. And along the way, we learned a little bit about scoped uh, messages and stuff like that in order to give it a more interesting uh, sort of initial prompt and, and way of acting. Um, okay. Uh, yep, 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 yep. Uh... Right. Okay. Let me share the code. I see a lot of people are like, oh no, I, I already blew past me. Um, whoops. So sorry about that, guys. I should have caught that earlier. Uh, GitHub.com slash Christian Freeman. And it's this first one here. It's called Cloudflare AI example. That's the final one that we're going to be building towards. Um, good question. The packages that we installed, just to catch that question, uh, Cloudflare AI as well as the HANO package. Wrangler was already installed when we created the project. You can also clone this down if you want and work from there. Feel free to, whatever works best for you. Okay, very cool. So now let's look at how do we actually integrate this in a project. So um, 
I'm going to do, in fact, I'm going to keep this open. I'm going to grab this template file here and I'm just going to use it. Um, but I'll explain how it works. So I just, you don't want to sit here and watch me type all this HTML. It'll be super boring. Um, but what I'm going to do is, and you can do this however you want. Um, Hano, the framework actually has support for uh, rendering JSX now. So if you want to write like a React style application in JSX, you can do that as well. Uh, I come from like an old school like Ruby background. So I tend to just like write HTML and just like load it in as a string because I am like a, well, I guess an old person now. Um, but basically the way that this will work when we want to actually render um, a UI is we will uh, just load it as a string and render it back. So I'm going to do two things. Um, first, I'm going to hang on to this code, but I'm actually going to make this a post. So there'll be a post request that comes in um, from the UI, and that's what will drive this uh, AI generation. And then that allows me to make a new route here at the root path that um, that will return back this HTML. So I'm going to say import uh, template from template.html. And then I'm going to return c.html template. OK. Now let's actually look at this template file and, and kind of understand what's going on. So it's very basic HTML file. There's some styles here. Um, super basic CSS, a um, couple fonts being loaded, a CSS reset. Um, I'll, you, it'll be better to just look at it and actually see how it, lay, how it lays out. Um, the important part here is uh, three pieces. So one, we have this div response. So this div response is where the content from the AI will actually show up. Two, we have this form. And the form has a input inside of it called query. So this is where we actually give the AI a prompt. We type in a little form, and then we click the submit button, and that will submit that up to our endpoint and start generating generating AI output. Um, probably the most complex part here is the uh, JavaScript to support that. Basically, what we do here is we look for this form. We add an event listener um, on the submit event. So when we either press enter on our keyboard to send a message or we click the submit uh, button, it will call this function. And from top to bottom, uh, first thing it will do is stop uh, the original submit event. So this just stops the page from refreshing, basically. Second, it will send a post request to that root path, just the slash uh, post request with JSON that just has the query of whatever we type. So this is literally just whatever we typed in that input. It's going to send it up, and then it's going to wait for that text to come back. Well, technically, it waits for the response here, and then it also converts it just into plain text. So whatever that text is that we get back, wait for a uh, JavaScript uh, interpreter to figure out what that text value is, and then assign it to the value or the inner HTML of that response div. So it's a really complicated way to type some stuff, send some stuff up, get some stuff back, and show it. It's it's uh, not super complicated, um, though it's just a lot of vanilla JavaScript. So there's you can imagine if you're a JavaScript developer, there's a ton of different ways to do this with a bunch of different frameworks and all kinds of other stuff. OK. So just to recap before we go back into the browser, so what we've done is we've changed the get uh, route here, the the uh, slash route to um, just return HTML. So we're just returning this HTML template. And now when we make a post request to this uh, root path, which is different obviously than a get request, when we're sending stuff to that URL, um, it will generate this AI response and it will send it back. So let's take a look here. I'll refresh. You can see this is my template that we set up. And now in terms of actually looking at the template, I mean, really, it's a lot of monospace font. So we have like a header up here. This will link back and forth between our two pages. Uh, we're not actually using this yet, but I showed you in this uh, example, you can go between the different blocking and streaming um, you know, pages. And then this form down here is sort of pinned to the bottom. You have an input here, 
as well as an ask button, which will submit it. Now, if I say something like, say hello to all of our attendees, and I say ask, you can see what happened here is, um, that's kind of hard to tell because the output is really silly. Let's do something else like, uh, what is the capital of Texas? So you can see it, it actually sent, sent a response back here, but it's not at all related to the question we just asked. So why is that? Well, the answer is that we haven't actually handled that incoming uh, input yet, right? So here um, we have this content, hello, how's it going? We need to actually get that data that's coming from that request. So to do that, uh, I'm gonna say uh, body here and I'm gonna await, yeah, I think I need to wait here. So c.rec.json. So I'm gonna take the incoming request and I'm gonna grab the JSON representation of that body that I sent up from the browser. And then inside of that, uh, we should have this body.query. So that comes from uh, this, right? We're just stringifying this object that has query inside of it. Um, and what I can do is say body query. Um, let's assign this to a variable, maybe question. I'll say body.query or I'll give it a fallback. So Sure, we'll say, hello, how's it going? I think in my code, I have like, what is the square root of nine? So we'll have that. And now if I replace that inside of this user message with this question, I can now parameterize the actual content that the AI is answering. So let me deploy this one more time. NPM run deploy again to deploy. And if I refresh the page here, I'll say, uh, say hello to all of our attendees. It'll take a second, maybe a couple seconds. Or I broke something. No, nope, it just took a really long time, and the message is really long. So clearly my code is not great for uh, <laughs> styling this. Um, but also, it seems like the pirate is actually super verbose, which is kind of funny. Uh, let's do 10%. I'll make the font size smaller, just so we can read it. I'm not going to worry too much about it. So ahoy there, matey. Uh, it is a grand day to be a meeting with such a fine group of scurvy dogs. Sure. Sounds good. So now what we're doing is we're passing uh, information to the AI contextually, right? Like from whatever this uh, UI is or whatever else. You can also do things like um, add a new role here that's like an assistant. <clears throat> so an assistant role kind of helps drive the, the output uh, the system sort of sets up context. You know, you are a pirate. You are a helpful assistant. In fact, let me go back to helpful assistant for now. But the uh, assistant role here helps drive the output. So maybe I say um, you should always respond in uh, a sentence or two. Let's try that. I don't actually know what the output will be for that. Um, but what we're doing is we're sort of on top of the initial system role. We're sort of guiding the output using this assistant uh, role here. So uh, I'll ask again. And by the way, we shouldn't have to refresh because it's not the UI that was updated, it's the endpoint, right? So if I say, um, say hello to all of our attendees, and I ask again, hello there, it's great to see you all here today. Is there anything I can help you with? So hard to know um, if it actually worked. I'm trying to think what's a good example of What's a good example of something that would probably be long? Uh, tell me a story. Let's just say that. And let's see if the assistant role worked. I don't know if it did because it seems like it's taking a long time. No, it did not work. So you have to play with the assistant role and kind of get a, you figure out what it can and what it can't do. It's a little up in the air. Uh, but the idea is generally when it does work, that you can sort of drive output or, you know, for instance, I've seen situations where you could say, you know, respond with JSON, right? Or respond as a CSV or something like that. Um, but we'll remove that for now. Uh, okay, so we're at a good stopping point for the blocking uh, example of this. Uh, we'll move to the streaming uh, version uh, in just a couple of minutes, but let me take some questions. Okay, uh, I think we already answered the code. I, did I drop that in chat? Oh my gosh, I didn't. Guys, I'm so sorry. What am I doing? 
Let me, yeah, there we go. Drop that. Okay. Um, so recorded session. Uh, yes, you can install that package. Yep, that's totally fine. Yep. Sample project. Uh, just linked it. Is there limits to um, use the N8 quantized model here? Are there limits on different accounts that make this one better for Edge? Um, they all have different limits, particularly around context length and stuff like that. Uh, I use this model just because it's the one that I wrote this example in a while ago. So you can check out the other ones. For instance, there's a Mistral model, which we released um, not too long ago that, as far as I know, is uh, generally supposed to be better than the Llama 2 model. Um, so definitely check that out if you're interested. But um, there's no... Um, if your question is in regards to access on a Cloudflare account basis, do some have access to other to certain models and do you have to pay more to get access to a different model? The answer is no, it's all available. Um, so yeah, the error uh, second parameter needs to be an object with field prompt. That was a while ago. Um, that was the initial error that I had. Thank you for that. I should have caught that. Uh, what was changed in Wrangler Tomal to get AI into the env? Uh, I can show that real quick. Just if you haven't gone back to that file, it's pretty straightforward. It's just the AI. Uh, I don't know what this is in Tomal. Maybe a table or like an object. I'm not sure. Um, and the key here is binding with the value AI. Now, this could be whatever you want, right? You could call this like Cloudflare AI. And the only difference is when you actually use it here inside of the env, you just need to update accordingly, right? So um, you can do that however you want. We'll change it just to show you that it does indeed work. Um, thanks for dropping the code there. Uh, so yeah, so questions on... Uh, questions on the recording. So in case you're late, uh, which is totally fine, welcome. Uh, the recording will be available at the end of the webinar series. So I will certainly ask if we can get it uh, sooner than that, but I'm not in the, not responsible for the recording. So I can't speak to that aspect of it, but I will definitely make that known uh, that people want it today. Um, da, 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 da. Can you recommend any documentation as to how to use the embedding capabilities of Cloudflare? Uh, stick around for the webinar tomorrow, and we'll look at how to use embedding, specifically by building a RAG project, a retrieval augmented generation. Um, we'll be using Vectorize as well as the embeddings models that are uh, in Cloudflare AI. So you'll get a full look at how that works. Very good question. Um, can you use custom models or your own fine-tuned Llama models? Not at the moment. Um, and yeah, I'm not sure, uh, what the status of that is. Um, I can't speak to it. I'm not really sure. Um, what is the coffee icon in your menu bar? These are the questions I love. Ask me about my Mac setup. Uh, what is this one? This is Lungo. Uh, it's on the app store. It's just for keeping, uh, my screen awake. It has a really nice coffee animation when you click the button. That's the stuff we're excited about. That's the important stuff. Um, okay. Uh, are the roles a predefined set of entities and is there a full list of suggested roles? The three roles are um, system, assistant, and user. And those come from, I, I don't really know what the convention, of, it's like, it's not a spec, but it's from OpenAI. It's something that they did with their API. I, th this might be, it's, I'm not really sure if there's more to it. Like if there's some science paper that defines how these work, I, I'm honestly not sure. Um, I just know that's kind of the convention I started seeing when I was working with like the chat GPT or the GPT 3.5 models, uh, via the API. Um, so, uh, cool. Okay. Let's, uh, I'll come back and grab some questions at the end. We got one more stretch of coding here, um, which is we're going to integrate the streaming example. Um, so again, just to recap, when we ask a question here, um, what is the best band of all time? There's this delay here, right? It's probably like two or three seconds. Um, and then you see that it updates. Um, the better solution here is to build streaming where as soon as the AI starts generating a response, we start sending it down to the user. Um, the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin. 
I'm going to go with the Beatles in this list, but it is highly subjective. So there you go. Um, so let's look at streaming. Streaming is something that has to happen on both um, sides of the equation, I guess, right? So it needs to be enabled here in the worker where we say we are going to stream this response. And then it also needs to be um, supported in the front end or wherever else. If you're building this in like a node project where you're getting output back, you need to handle the stream. So I'm going to show you how to handle the stream in the browser. Um, but there's a lot of different off-the-shelf tools that you could use for doing this in other languages as well. Um, okay. And actually to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a whole new um, uh, two things. One, we're going to set up a new template. I'm going to pull the template down again like I did in the last case just because I don't want to type all of it out. Um, and then we're also going to set up a separate route for streaming responses from the AI just so you can see the, the code next to each other and kind of how it looks uh, in comparison. So I'm going to make a new path here called slash B, which is actually going to be my blocking uh my blocking template here. Um, and then I'm going to update this template that I already set up here. I'm gonna call this blocking.html. And then I'm just gonna change all of these to blocking. And then this uh, root path here, this is actually gonna be the streaming template. So I will say streaming here. And then I'll grab the template streaming and I will paste it down. It's super similar. The only thing that's different is the JavaScript function to actually handle uh, the response. So I'll say streaming.html, and I'll paste that in. Okay. Now let's look at how to actually do the uh, streaming request back from the AI. So I'm going to set up a new route here. I'm going to call it slash stream. And uh, this will probably need to be async. Grab that parameter. Okay, so inside of here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by setting up all of this stuff. So all of the code I had before with one exception. The way that I get this query parameter is actually gonna be done via a, or I'm sorry, the way I get this query uh, uh, value here is I'm going to use a query parameter. Uh, let's see, what's the right way to do that. I always forget the syntax. Right. Okay. So we'll say Siri, uh, query <laughs> equals uh, C dot rec dot query. Now this is going to give you a um, like an object, a key value pairs of query parameters, but it also can be called as a function, in which case I'll just give it a query, which is a little confusing. Uh, but basically this corresponds to the, the query parameter that we're sending up uh, that's called query. You could call it question or prompt or something else as well. Now I will drop this uh, body here because we're not getting it from a JSON body anymore. We just have this value query. And so now our question is going to be either the query parameter, uh, which would be something like this. Uh, you know, obviously this would be like URL encoded with spaces and stuff like that, but it would basically look like that or it will default to what is the square root of nine. Okay, so now we'll come down here and I'm gonna grab this AI response. Now all of this is gonna be the same, same model name, same messages being passed in, but we're gonna add this additional parameter here called, if I can type, stream uh, set to true. So now instead of generating a blocking response, it's going to uh, return a stream. And then the final thing we're going to do here is we're going to set up a particular kind of response uh, with the AI response as the body and also a header here. So I'll pass in this headers uh, uh, object here as part of this options uh, argument into the response. And it's just going to have a single header content type. And it's set to, what is it? Text slash event stream. So what I'm doing here is setting up a response. I'm sending back the AI response, um, you know, whatever the the sort of streaming representation of that response is, is the body. And then I'm also passing in a header here that says the content type of this is a event stream. So I'm sending the stream down uh, to the client. Okay, so 
just to take a sec to compare here, um, you can see everything uh, here is the same, same AI uh, instantiation of that, um, you know, that AI instance. The query is slightly different. We're getting it as a query parameter, but we're setting up the messages in the same way, setting up the AI run in the same way, with the exception of this stream set to true. And then we're just returning that response back. Okay. So now looking at streaming HTML, all of this is exactly the same. Everything exactly the same, except for this uh, section here. So instead of sending a fetch request, a post up to that uh, workers URL, what we're doing is first setting up this little URL here. There's probably better ways to do this, but this is just kind of the quick and dirty way to do it where the URL is slash stream, right? So that's this right here. And then the query parameter here, so question mark query equals the value of this input, okay? So we're just sending it as a query parameter. And then we set up a new instance of this event source. Uh, you can find the documentation for this on MDN. It's basically a, a streaming event source from this URL. So we make a request. When, when this happens, I'll show you what it looks like in the um, network tab on Chrome. It'll set up a new uh, streaming uh, connection to that URL. And then it should, in theory, start receiving messages back. And so I'll show you what this looks like, actually. I think we have time to do this. It's, it's a little interesting. Um, oh, will I be able to show you how this works? Well, yes, let's do this. So if I make the other uh, blocking request, if I make that also streaming, that's like a, a kind of silly way to show you how it works. So if I refresh here, nope, I broke something. Classic, what did I break? Streaming, oh, I need to import that file. And I actually wanna to go to the blocking one anyway, but it's good I caught that now. So let's go to the blocking page. This is our old one that we did. And if I say, say hello to all of our attendees, this is what will happen with the streaming. So it'll probably take a sec here. No, it didn't work. Okay, well, I wanted to show you how it works, but I couldn't find a good example. Uh, I'll go in the docs and show you what it looks like just because it is interesting. So basically, when there is streaming going on, instead of it being a blocking response, let's wait three or four seconds and then get it all back. What we do is we actually get this data back here where we have this little chunk. So response new, response space York, response space is. So we get this JSON back every single time there's a new uh, chunk of the event. And that's what we're actually going to handle here. So when we go in our streaming code, that's what's going on. So first, we'll come back to this section in a second. Um, first, what we're doing is we're looking at what is the event data that's coming in. And then we're parsing it because we know that it's JSON, right? So this response, I'm like pointing at my laptop screen like you can <laughs> see my finger. Uh, the response here is new, York is, right? So we're parsing this data. And then we are appending it to the response, which is that little container where the text sits in. Um, we're appending with plus equals that data dot response. So what that will do is it'll slowly build up the string as we get that data back. Now, there's a spe uh, specific token that comes back. You can see here at the end, it says data done, uh, like in uh, square brackets. And so that indicates from the streaming response that it is done responding uh, with, with text. And so what we do is we check for this event data equals done. And then if it is done, we both close the source. So we say, we're now done streaming, go ahead and clean up this, uh, this source. And then we clear out the form, right? So we've gotten our response back. Let's clear out the form so they can write whatever their new thing uh, that they want to say to the, the AI is. <clears throat> Let me deploy this one more time. We're really <clears throat> coming out uh, four minutes left. So we're really uh, running out of time here. Um, and so what I'll do here, actually, I'll go to this one because this is the one we've been building. Um, and what I'll do is I will say, well, same one as always, say hello to our attendees. And what you can see here is this actually started opening up. First off, streaming is cool that it just worked. I'll do it one more time so you can see uh, what is the best uh, 
Oh, what's a good example? Well, what is the capital of Texas? Let's do that. I'm here in here in Texas. Um, so the capital of Texas is Austin. You can see you tried to append here. Great question. Actually, it looks like there's a glitch here, which is we need to clear out. Um, we need to clear out our um, inner HTML here too, right? So let's do that real quick. We'll say this is empty now, just so we don't append one really big long message. Um, but if we come in here in the event stream, you can see this is, and I'll make this a little bigger. This is what it actually looks like when we're getting that information back. Hello there, token. It just, so it's like a bunch of chunks, right? And what we're doing is we're parsing through all of those, appending them here onto the screen. And then at the very end, we get this done token, which we check for and close the connection uh, accordingly. So let's say, uh, what is the capital of Texas? Great question. The capital of Texas is Austin. What is the capital of the U.S.? Capital of the United States is Washington. So you can see it's now it's re uh, removing it, the, the inner HTML of this container and replacing it with, um, yeah, with the streaming text. Okay. Um, so I will drop this link one more time in here. It's uh, github.com slash Christian Freeman slash Cloudflare dash AI dash example. Put in there one more time in case you joined late. Um, you could take this, you can deploy with it. Now, if you have questions about questions about how to get started with workers, I would highly recommend you go here, go to the developers.cloudflare.com slash workers. This is the Cloudflare workers documentation. Go to the guide here, get started guide. This will show you how to install everything you need uh, to use Wrangler, our command line tool, how to deploy workers applications and everything else. And then once you got that all figured out, um, there's also a get started guide for workers AI. So you can look at some of our other models and things like that and, uh, and get started building with them. And the last thing I'll say is, uh, I believe it's the same time. I won't be late tomorrow. Apologies for being late. Um, but there will be another webinar tomorrow where we will go into even more detail. Um, we'll be building something pretty similar to this, but with way more functionality. We'll be building something uh, called a RAG project, which is a retrieval augmented generation uh, example. So basically what it will allow you to do is put data inside of a database and then use uh, a vector database and embeddings to grab that information from that database and provide it as context to your chatbot. So say you have the answer to some question that it doesn't know, uh, you wanna give it that information using uh, embeddings and using a vector database, uh, I will show you how to do that tomorrow. So definitely come by same time tomorrow. And um, like I said, the recording for this will uh, be available along with all the other recordings, I believe next week, uh, once the webinars have wrapped up. So if you wanna go through and review it over your holiday break, uh, feel free. Um, let's see what else. If you wanna follow me on Twitter and ask me any questions or anything like that, I'm on Twitter at Christian F underscore. Um, check out, uh, I have all kinds of videos and stuff that I do over at my 7Dev uh, YouTube channel. You can go to my link here. Uh, I'm just going into full on plug my own stuff territory. Uh, but you can go here and I have all kinds of other videos on AI, including tutorials and, and tools and stuff that I like if you wanna get more into this stuff. Um, as well as all kinds of Cloudflare related workers tutorials and things like that. Um, great. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, this is really fun. It went by super quickly as live coding always does, but I hope you found it useful and interesting and uh, hopefully I'll see you tomorrow. So thanks so much. I'm going to stop the, uh, the stream. And if you have any questions, um, you know, reach out to me on Twitter. Uh, you can also email me Christian at Cloudflare. I know I have a couple emails from the first webinar last week. I promise I will get to them. Uh, I'm in like planning mode. So it's hard for me to, you know, respond to emails when I have to plan a little bit for tomorrow's, but uh, I will get to it. I promise. So thanks so much guys. And uh, I will see you tomorrow, hopefully for the next webinar. See ya.